All right, this is a short video on uh, uh, clarifying a couple things with the Zima lighter and repair. Uh, the first one's going to be on a solid pin type filler valve. You know where you have a filler valve that uh, looks like this here. I've had this one taken apart, but uh, I want to show you. This is what you... When you got a filler valve, looks like that, okay? Now, I've been... I sold the kit to a gentleman to rebuild his lighter with, and... What I've been using is uh, these seals to rebuild them with. They're here. Same thing I use at the moment for uh, rebuilding the internal gas valve. Okay, these work great, but the problem is they're wider. They're wider. They're wider than the original one that's on there, okay? And what that does, is they're a little wider, what that does, doesn't allow your pin to protrude up as much as it would normally, possibly, okay? Say for instance. So what that does, is when you go fill this up, you can't push that pin down far enough to get any butane in there, okay? Because the butane actually goes around this pin. So when you poke it, that's why there's this rubber seal. The butane actually goes around that pin inside the lighter valve itself, okay? So when the spring, and if you let go, the spring puts pressure on it here and puts that flat side of this here valve right up against that rubber seal. All right, but because it seals thicker now, it might not allow the pin here to protrude enough for when you put your can of butane on there to push down far enough, okay? Now, what I had done on my lighters to help uh, from that, and I might not have clarified this in my videos, that's why I'm doing it now. I've taken this little, this seal out right here on top, this seal out right here on top, and I've uh, trimmed it down on the bottom side, maybe half, to give you a little bit more room. Just have to try that. You know, trim it down little by little if you want, file it down, shave it down, however you want to do it. Then until you can, it starts allowing enough butane in there to uh, this pin poking up a little further, giving you just enough room to fill that up. Okay. All right, now that's the story on that right there. Now, in order to really, because uh, these, filling these up can be a headache. You guys know that. You can be losing a bunch of butane and you think, man, I'm just getting freaking tired of going through a can of butane as fast as you do. So, uh, you guys probably seen my old video on uh filler valve mod well um this is a newer one that i'm doing uh it's i'm using a different type of valve okay and the valve that i'm using right here is this valve here which i got online all right now i have done this valve mod here I'm, I'm still repairing this lighter here. I'm taking it apart and doing a few things, but I've done that valve on this lighter, the mod on this lighter here. You see the valve down in there. Right. You can also notice too that uh, the Zama filler valve cap goes down inside too. Okay, so there's no clearance issues there. Now, on the other mod that I did, I used the Ronson valve. The deal with the Ronson valve is, guys, is they're non-repairable, 
Okay. This valve can be repaired, be disassembled. I'm not going to disassemble it. But there is a different size tap assembly that you got to use when you're doing this particular valve mod here. Because this particular filler valve is a little bit bigger. This requires this tap right here, M5 by 0.5 H2. You can get off of eBay. Usually comes out of China. Alright, that's the exact one you need for this valve here. Now, I don't have the correct drill for uh, this to drill at, but usually I can, the point of it will tap it out and drill it. But there is enough thread in there because if these are fine to grip a hold okay if you just don't want to do the soldering thing down there like I did you know put a little go through all that trouble I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tap this valve out and guys you're gonna have to use either your lighter this is an old lighter that I got you can see it doesn't have all the internals that are kind of out of it I just use this particular lighter casing for this particular project make sure you put an o-ring on it because I use this to hold my filler valves as I'm tapping them out all right because if you don't you try to hold it this is what's going to happen to you right here yep I ruined this particular valve right here. Trying to tap that out. So, you can use your regular lighter. But you're going to have to make sure that you clean the inside of it out. When you're done, make sure there ain't no brass. Uh, brass, you know, flakes and shavings in there from doing this. This isn't easy to do this way. I probably could drill that out a little bit. I got, and I'll tell you what, just so you'll know, you'll get some of these on uh, the internet here. 10 by 3.7 millimeter. 10 by 3.7 millimeter. Okay, it'll help drill this out. Matter of fact, maybe I'll just go ahead and take one and drill it out. Make it easier on me to tap. I'm not sitting here pushing as hard on this. This that's actually this drill bit's actually for the smaller Ronson valve. But might shave off enough on uh, the inside of this to make this a little bit easier. This this here tap is about a half a millimeter larger in size don't sound like much but you start tapping out he'll realize just about how much that is which is quite a bit
and I'm going to order a drill bit for that too. Make sure it's the appropriate size here on out. It's going to take considerable effort. Anyway, you got the general idea. Let's go back to this valve here. Okay, another thing is why I'm at this particular valve is already done. This is what I've been using. You guys see me use this for take these out. And this thing isn't exactly isn't exactly what you need. Okay. Now I've even made these. See this here piece of brass? File that down. Got that in there. And it does work, but I'll tell you what, guys. You don't want to use brass tools. The reason is, you'll see the ends of these here right here. They broken off. Time you make a tool like that, you want to use steel. And I come up with an idea just today as I was talking to a gentleman that uh, here's what I'd recommend I recommend get your nut driver one that'll fit one that'll fit just fit real good if you have to sand the edges or if you have to sand the outer edges down to this nut driver one that'll fit right in there Okay, just get your Dremel tool and some files and file that down where that sits in there and just mates up just like it, just like you want it to. All right, enough of that. Here's the valve. After I uh, drilled and tapped, uh, and you get it seated in there, that's what it looks like. And I'll tell you what, guys, this is just, it's just so much easier. It's just a no-brainer. Just a no-brainer. See that butane come right out of there, no problem. No problem to fill your Zama lighter up. The newer Zama sometimes will have uh, have these in them, but these older solid pin ones, like I showed you, just don't have that available. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna look for my tool here to take that out. Now there isn't a whole lot. There it is. Like I said, you can break that apart and refill it. And you can see that there. That's just held on by a little bit of thread. But Ben says it's got a thick O-ring on it. When you do tighten that down in there, don't be thinking that you gotta snug that down real tight. You might end up stripping your threads out and they're just snugging down. Hand, hand tight like that. That's good. And you, if, if you stick it in there and you put your alcohol, pressurize your tank and put your alcohol down in here, see if you're getting at least you get a little bit of leak, then just stick this down in there and just snug it down a little more while it's in your lighter. Just a little bit. All you need, guys, is just enough to seal that O-ring. You put too much pressure on the O-ring, you're going to cause a leak. Not enough, it's going to be a leak. And too much, you're going to have a leak. All right? So, you know, with that O-ring seal being around there, even though there's minute threads on the inside of this, probably about a millimeter, holding on to that valve, you know, you still should be good. It gets to the point where, you know, it messes up and... It's not right, and you're gonna have to do a little mod, like I showed you in my earlier videos. Okay, with that out of the way. Another thing I want to go over to is these Zama. <coughs> Excuse me. These Zama main internal seals. This is the original one here. 
See the original one has a little bit of the brass sticking past? Alright, you see that? Right there on the edge, right here. Well, here's what happens when you put these newer seals on. I mean, you don't really get anything showing past there. Alright, so your rubber's actually sticking out past the brass. Now, what I have done on these, I've trimmed off this first ring a little bit. Trimmed them off, sanded them down, however you want to do it, cut them down, and put them on just so a little bit of that uh, brass shows up past that. That's with my new seal. Now, I am working on getting another supplier of new original size seals, but that's still in process at the moment. So, this is what uh, the rebuild uh, uh, seal looks like for at the moment, okay? And they are a little bit wider than I like. But here's the deal, with the original, with the original, this is the inside, there's not the wick on this, but with the original valve, you can see, see the indents in on the, on the pressure valve? This usually comes down and presses on that and shuts that gas off, all right? Those pressure valves inside these Zamas are real thin. This is actually probably about half the size it should be, half the thickness. Okay, and the ones that I've been using, like this one, this one here has been cut down. Well, what shuts that gas off is when this here piece comes down inside here and compresses to the point that just shuts it off. It's up in here, okay? Now, you got this wide seal on here. There's a good chance it's not gonna get shut off like it should. That's why I trimmed them down a little bit. That's why I'm working on another seal too. Okay, that's that. Keep that in mind. Now, another thing we'll talk about here. This is that main, this is the part here on top. See this little orifice in here? That's your hole. There's a little hole in there. This is the part when you screw your flame adjuster. This is what turns and goes up and down in your lighter, pushes on this part here that compresses your sponge that I showed you earlier. Okay, now if you take that spring off, see down in there, little stopper. Sometimes, you, you know, when you take your lighter part, this will have a dimple in it. Been sitting there for quite a while. What you can do is, Take your little pick, pick that out, and turn that around upside down, and you'll have this nice new little stopper. Now, I've cut some seals uh, off of uh, some parts that I got for these when the, when the stopper is no good, but I actually have to use two of them to put in here because they're thinner. And you want that rubber stick out about that far right there past that brass. That rubber has got to be out past that brass. You say why? Because you know you don't have much. See the dimple on that? You don't have much there. If that rubber is now past that brass, you might not get a stop. Stop on that gas flow off that orifice. All right, keep that in mind. That's it on that for right now, guys. Hopefully that kind of clarifies a few things to some guys out there that had a few questions.